When did you first fall in love with programming? I didn't program a lot when I was in high school, but I had a friend who had a Commodore pet. And after we saw Star Wars, he said, hey, let's make a, a basic uh, program that does the Death Star Trench run. And it was just, you know, simple 2D graphics. And I didn't know what I was doing, so I just helped him out uh, on the math and stuff like that. I was a math and science kid. I was really into uh, the HP calculators of the early mid 70s. These were the RPN. They were really strongly built. And as R. At Goldfinger <laughs> instead of gold, divinely heavy. <laughs> There's probably some gold in them too, gold metallization. But they were awesome calculators and they had all the scientific functions. So I was really into that. Um, so I, I aimed toward physics. Um, I was a little late for the, I think the, you know, the 20th century golden age. And I read a lot of science fiction. So I was like, yeah, it's on the hyper drives and warp drives. And uh, physics was not going to get there quickly. And I started hacking on computers while I was studying physics as an undergraduate at Santa Clara University. And, um, you know, I, I dodged the Fortran bullet because I was in the <laughs> science department instead of the engineering department where they still did Fortran and card decks. I think they had an auto collator. But uh, we were using Pascal, and uh, I got one of the first portable C compilers uh, ports to the deck mini computers we were using. And I, I fell in love with programming just based on um, you know procedural abstraction, uh, Pascal, just what now would be considered old school, like structured programming from the 70s. Uh, Niklaus Wirt, the creator of Pascal, was a good writer and a good pedagogue, right? He always at ETH would do these courses where it's like build your own computer, mm -hmm. build your own compiler, build your own operating system. From scratch. Yeah, okay. kind of. And uh, <laughs> I know some people who are grad students under him and said he was, um, he would torture the students with things like this custom email system that had 25 word limit <laughs> <laughs> and uh, things like that. I unfortunately dodged both the Pascal and the Fortran bullets. Mm. Uh, could you uh, maybe, uh, linger on uh, the Pascal, like what kind of programming language was it? W what is it reminiscent of, of today? Because it sounds like it may have had uh, an impact on your own tra trajectory. Yeah, it, it was in the Algol family and Algol was, um, you know, the big uh, successful uh, language design and compiler project in the 60s. It had a successor called Algol 68, which was ambitious, but not as successful. But Pascal was kind of a wordy procedures and functions language. It distinguished between functions which return a value and procedures which don't, which mm -hmm. just compute. Uh, and uh, you could say that whole Algol family went into ADA. Um, Pascal had a second life thanks to Borland with Turbo Pascal, mm -hmm. which was hugely successful. Uh, I think in large part due to Anders Helsberg, who then went to Microsoft and mm -hmm. did you know C Sharp and .NET yeah. with his team there, and it's done really well doing TypeScript, type JavaScript. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, there's a, there's a lineage here, uh, but. I was also interested in C and Unix by the time I was an undergrad because uh, people were bringing Unix up on all sorts of hardware. I had some friends who were doing their own wire wrap computers, 6820 maybe. Um, and I was wire wrapping for my engineering course, um, 6809 or something simpler, building a computer on a board. And I wanted to build a more ambitious one and port Unix to it, but I picked the wrong processor. I picked the National Semiconductor NS16032, which was this amazing, you know, CISC, com com uh, complex instruction set computer, and not the reduced instruction set computers that were just being uh, contemplated into the mid 80s. Um, and RISC ultimately won out. RISC won in some ways, it, it, it dissolved into, you have both. Now you have these superscalar architectures where like Intel has kept probably too much backward compatibility at the instruction level. But that's just a, there's a front end that parses that into these, you know, these wide internal instructions. So, you know, the, the very long instruction word research that um, was also interesting at the time kind of became the microarchitecture inside the backward compatible Intel. Uh, but I picked the National Semi chip and it never got made successfully. It was full of bugs and I never could have brought it up. But I went on uh, out of physics after three years into math computer science. And like I said, I did it because I saw um, I was being sort of, childlike and naive about physics. And I thought, uh, meanwhile, the Valley is, is go-go for computers. The Apple II, right? The, the PC, the Intel um, 8086, uh, 8088 based PC, the IBM, you know, gave Microsoft the, the future for mm -hmm. <laughs> in a somewhat fishy deal. 